please help me in welcoming Scott Mosby. Thank you, Scott. Well, good evening. My name is Scott Mosby. Do any of you know KMOX Radio? Where the Cardinals play, and the Blues play, and occasionally I play. Uh, I'm here to speak with you about places to take care of your residents, which in turn takes care of you. So for so many years, we buy a home, we make the payments, we live there, we build up equity, and the time comes when that residence, its time is to take care of us. So we've invested and we're looking for a safe and comfortable place for our lives. I'm going to go through some places that uh, invest. This may seem very basic, but I assure you there are many people who forget these basics. And as we get to the uh, second part of the presentation, I'll get into more of the um, far-reaching uh, consequences. I'm here with three hats. One is a KMOX radio host also to represent my own company, Mosby Building Arts, and third as kind of an ambassador of aging in place or universal design, which is the concept of having our homes ready to take care of ourselves so for future preparing in today's dollars. So I'll really talk about that a little bit. You ready to get going? Yeah. Okay. Um, exterior renovation, I'm sorry, uh, lighting here. Really, the house on the left was uh, this is, a, comp this is a, a couple that was preparing to retire. Their home was paid for, but the outside really wasn't going to sustain them for the next five or 10 years, much less the next 20. So putting your time and your efforts into the outside of the home. Have you ever heard the real estate agent that says uh, the first impression is the lasting impression? You only get one chance to make a first impression, that sort of thing. Well, first impression or curb appeal real estate agents will share with you that the curb appeal is very important for the valuation of the house. So simply taking care of the siding, windows, roofing, things like that on the outside, get the basics right. Likewise, security and safety. Uh, we have people that we're paying through our tax dollars, firefighters, paramedics, police, and helping them take care of our homes and ourselves is a good trade, a good return on our investment. So security and safety, doors, window locks, dead bolts, trimming bushes back from the front of the house so that the police cruiser driving by our homes can check that the bad guys are there or not. If we travel, maybe we're out of town for time, that's very important. Landscaping, safety, lighting. The older I get, the more lighting I require. My eyes just don't seem to be working quite the same way they were 30 years ago, and I notice that's a changing thing. So prepare for that. Now's the time to, to act. Weather protect, protection. Make sure old man winter is outside and it's comfortable on the inside, roof, siding, windows. So take care of the outside. Just like today, we all go outside. How many of us brought and wore a coat? Think of the same for your home. Get the outside protected from the elements just like we do as well. A second thing, a solid foundation. Solid built on the rock. How important is that? So foundations and structures, anything that gives you a sense of uneasiness. Disease is generally something to pay attention to. That little voice in your heart, that little tightness in the stomach, whatever it is, that sense of unease will communicate to you what needs attention, likewise to a potential home buyer, what gets their attention on a not positive thing. So get the basics right. Structural integrity, weak, cracked foundation, anything rusting on steel beams, wood rot on those big members that may be downstairs in the basement of your home. Anything that is cause for concern in your eyes, your mind, your heart, that will touch a home inspector that will touch a potential home buyer, and those are adjustments on the offering price that will be made, and if they are missed on that offering price, the home inspector will come back, identify these items, and you'll then start adjusting the sale price down on your residence. So when you're going to sell the house, these are wise investments. Likewise, why don't we improve the home for ourselves instead of just putting all the money into it right when we're selling it for the next owner? So I advise you are the best gauge of the next buyer and therefore return on investment. Beam and column supports, make sure those are solid. But again, anything that makes you uncomfortable, uneasy, a sense of dis-ease, 
pay attention to that. Rust, rot, concrete, cracked concrete, although it may not be a big issue on a floor or a driveway, walk, patio. If it's unsightly, it bears attention. And if it's a trip hazard, it truly is an important thing to pay attention to. So again, get the outside right, get the foundation right, make sure the home is built solidly on a good rock, good foundation, good base, and on we go to item three. A dry basement. Who here has a really, truly dry basement? Nice. I'm proud of you. In St. Louis in the Midwest, with a town we call Clayton, that's quite an accomplishment. We are really a brick town because we have a preponderance of clay. Clay is a material that has a lot of organic matter in it. When it gets wet, it swells. Wood, when it gets wet, it swells. So it moves. It's called expansive clay, expansive soil. So in a town built with clay, we have quite a bit of issues with foundations. So get the foundation right. Stop the water leaks as that foundation moves and adjusts. It wasn't built to be a boat or a swimming pool. It's structurally designed to hold up a heavy house. But as it cracks, it's important water leaks come in and there's moisture management, all sorts of things that need to happen. Standing water, of course, you'll know that very bad. Uh, but humidity, pay attention to humidity. Um, Anybody use an indoor outdoor digital thermometer? Get them for 10, 15 dollars at the hardware store. They also have a digital readout for relative humidity. It's very important that the relative humidity in a house where we live is held at the proper area and level. Excess humidity, relative humidity above 55 percent breeds the bugs, the mice, the, the, uh, all the critters that we really want to stay out. It also breeds mold, mildew, and it affects adversely the indoor air quality. So pay attention not only to standing water, but moisture and humidity. Your shower at home is a perfect example of that. You take a shower, close the door, no ventilation, that water sits up against the tile or the shower base, and you wind up with this black stuff growing. Generally not a big issue, but that's Mother Nature's way of driving us all back to dust, whether we're building materials or people. So pay attention to relative humidity. 50% and below relative humidity. Ideally, a home would be at about 30 to 35% relative humidity, sometimes hard to pick up at this time of year. But too much of it, especially in a town where summer has relative humidity, routinely 90, 95%. Do you know what close means? Oh, it's close that feeling where the humidity and the constant moisture against our skin prohibits us from perspiring and, and cooling our bodies. Cheerful environment, anything that looks like the picture on the left is not very fun and it's not going to bring a home buyer's valuation or the feeling of, oh, this is my new home. I'm going to make a nice offer on this house. Just painting that room, paint, abundant lighting, perhaps a rug if it's dry. But things like that, you can fix up a lower level laundry area to be bright and shiny and well illuminated and have a very good return on investment for very low dollars. So oftentimes we're called into homes to finish lower levels and because of the building code, the ceiling height may be too low. We're prohibited from doing that. It still can be painted, abundant lighting, and a cheerful surrounding and you dramatically increase the home's value and certainly the perception to a home buyer. All of this translates into sale price of the home. Again, why don't we do these improvements for ourselves and then sell them when we move out? Again, keep good foundation, good outside water, humidity, moisture, cheerful environment. It's all about that feeling and the perception so this is a first impression. The basement is most definitely the first impression for that level. Any questions so far? All right, on we go. Reliable roof. This is more than just roof shingles, slate, tile. It's a system. You and I have a head, we have hair, we have eyebrows, all of things that keep the sun, the rain, and the things off of us. We might wear a hat that has a hat brim. The home has a roof. It also has a chimney sticking up. That chimney is a different type of material. Around the edges are gutters. The siding sometimes comes up to that overhang. 
A roof is the perfect example of four or five different materials converging with one purpose to manage water and moisture to keep that water out of our home. Good thing. Important thing. But realize the appearance is important. Again, the first appeal. But the roof is a system. Attic ventilation. Oh man. We are in the middle of one of the greatest training things for building science, and it's called seven degrees below zero. There are not too many leaks. There's not rain. We do have snow. But in the freezing and the thawing and the sunshine, it, ice damming is a situation where the snow pulls out quart, uh, very close to the edge of the roof, and then it melts during the day, turns into liquid, and then it slowly starts to freeze. Well, through something called capillary action and surface adhesion, the water literally crawls uphill under your roof shingles and creates a situation where the water and the ice are below your roof. And then it thaws again, and now we're called with water leaks. I have a roof leak. Well, not really a roof leak. You have poor ventilation because you're not keeping that roof cold enough by circulating the outside air. So there are a lot of aspects to this, but recognize that the attic ventilation is part of the roof. The roof shingles are part of the roof. Bath vent fan venting. If you're blowing moisture from the bathroom up into the attic and it's not properly exhausted through and outside the house, you're literally building a terrarium up in your attic. And I've been in attics. This is really something to see. It's one of nature's wonders. To see a snowstorm inside of an occupied home in their attic. So it's possible. Again, that relative humidity, you get it cold enough, high enough uh, humidity. And just like a terrarium where the water drips out of the top, you change that temperature. And that water then eventually turns into ice crystals or snow. Gutters flashing, tuck pointing, all those materials where all that snow and ice comes down to the edge, still, this is all part of the roof. So when people talk about having a new roof and all they get are some shingles put on, you may not have stopped the water problem. You may have addressed only one-fifth of that system. So keep in mind, putting a head on our head, an umbrella over our head, and a roof on the house involves very many things because where that chimney comes down through the roof, the water will, by surface adhesion, just roll right down that beautiful stucco, right down to the roofing, and there's a flashing or metal transition. Keeps the water out. Anyway, this is very important. My message is the roof is much more than shingles, gutters, flashing, ventilation, bath venting, uh, and all sorts of things that go along with it. So it's more than just that. And it's very, uh, it's, it's one of the highest complaints in the home improvement industry because a consumer, instead of saying, make the water stay out of my house, will say, I need a new roof. You know, if you're a roofer, everything's a new roof. So keep in mind there's more to it than just those roof shingles or materials. Heating, yes, sir? Uh, I recently seen on TV an advertisement for metal. Yes. Roof. Been here for hundreds of years. How many times have you driven down the highway and you look off at a, a barn and it's got a metal roof? That's true, but the house, I haven't seen one like that yet. Well, it's the aesthetics. The only difference between that old barn roof from years ago and new homes is how that metal is put together. There are coatings on metal roofs, and, and most metal roofs have a lifespan of somewhere between 40 and 60 years because it's a coated piece of steel bent up into an assembly that clips together. It's kind of like an erector set. Very reliable, but like every other roof, it's where those materials intersect other areas, like roof valleys, um, vents, ventilations, um, gutters, things like that. So metal roofing is a very good roofing material. It's a premium. It'll cost you two to three times the cost of a normal asphalt roof but you're buying years. So frankly, you can get an asphalt roof that'll last 40 to 60 years. It's a very heavy material. So you can get that performance from very many different types of materials. Metal roofing is a, a tremendous one. It is a premium roof. Did I answer your question? Right, right. Indeed it is. Likewise, the valuation, though, the next buyer on return on investment. Think of roofing of buying time. And think of most home improvements and remodeling as buying time. 
You can inexpensively do it and you buy a short span of time. You can do it with more comprehensive work and thought and planning and you're getting more performance for longer years. So you can buy a short-term roof, you can buy a long-term roof. Steel or metal is a good example of a long-term roof. Heat and cool water heater, here we go. Uh, we do a lot of energy audits. Uh, we were one of the first companies that were certified in the state of Missouri to perform energy audits. All this is, is you can do the same thing that we do. Open your checkbook and find out where you're spending energy for. It will be for gas, electric, your big utility bills. So your first in this part of the country, actually, cooling is about 55% of our dollar for energy. We spend just a little bit more cooling our homes than we do heating our homes. So it's very important to think about the summer. We don't often think about that because we don't quite feel it the same way. But heating, natural gas, electric, very important. So the first thing on our list is getting an efficient furnace. Uh, second thing is an efficient air conditioning. And third thing is domestic hot water. So the hot water heater is the third largest energy user in pretty much any American home. Uh, you and I are away from our homes right now. How many have a regular water heater with a tank, you know, 40 or 50 gallon? Okay. Uh, right now that water heater is spending money, our money, to keep that hot water hot. And there are on-demand tankless water heaters that will give you water, hot water, till the cows come home. It will continue to make hot water. The issue about it is that it doesn't have a tank or it has a very small tank in what's now called a hybrid. And it is spending nothing right now to make hot water because until we need it, it doesn't start making hot water. So there are a few consequences of that. One is it takes a few minutes or a few seconds for that hot water to heat up, travel through the pipes, and come to our faucets or our shower or tub, whatever it might be. But it, they are certain sizes. So my point being there, that there are capital investments for more expensive water heaters that are tankless, very efficient. If you travel, that water heater will cost you nothing to operate while you're gone. And while we're here tonight, those water heaters cost us nothing. A regular tank water heater, on the other hand, is charged with keeping water at 120 degrees or 150 degrees, whether we use it or not. So there's a good return on investment. And, and all of these things are a capital investment. Dollar outlay for higher efficiency, like cars. Dollar outlay for a more energy efficient engine has more miles per gallon. Likewise, every appliance has the same. Am I getting too deep here? I can go on for this stuff and bore you forever. What is a hybrid? A hybrid is the, con it's the combination of a tankless water heater with a small tank. The reason being, when I go to wash my hands, I really don't need 40 or 50 gallons hot for my hands, and I don't need an on-demand water heater. This thing's like a blast furnace that heats water as it flies by in a pipe. But to just do a pint of water to wash my hands, I don't need that big behemoth of a water heater to crank on. I just need a few cups of water. So the hybrid is a combination small tank, maybe five or 10 gallons, coupled with that on-demand or tankless water heater, as it was kind of referred to. And that's where it's going now, because we learned a lot that we don't need to turn on the big mama of the water heater just to wash our hands. Yes? Yep, I recognize your voice. Oh, 